Guys, I'm really happy to um, invite and welcome to the podcast um, Dr. Philip Magnus. Now, Phil Magnus is an economic historian. He's an expert on, well, a whole range of issues from taxation to slavery. He's written about the political economy of slavery. He has a PhD from George Mason University in Virginia. He's currently a fellow, a research fellow at the American Institute for Economic Research. And we're going to talk about the 1619 Project. Phil, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, let me begin by noting that you are an historian who was cited by the 1619 Project favorably until they realized that you were a critic and then they sort of booted you from their canon. So talk a little bit about what you were cited uh, uh, for um, and then what happened when they realized that you weren't entirely on board with the overall thesis? A true story. So uh, back in 2019, when the 1619 Project first appeared in the New York Times, it came under criticism from some other historians because it uh, it drew attention to Abraham Lincoln's work with the colonization movement. This was the idea to resettle free slaves abroad in Liberia or Central America. And right after that criticism came out, Nicole Hannah-Jones, who was the uh, principal organizer and author of the 1619 Project, uh, responds to her critics by saying, no, you have the history wrong. Recent research on Abraham Lincoln has shown that he was indeed a colonizationist and was involved in all of these projects. And what was that research? Well, she tweeted out a link to uh, a book by myself, Colonization After Emancipation, uh, Lincoln and the Movement for Black Resettlement, which is one of the first uh, full-length scholarly studies of Lincoln's colonization work. Uh, this is a subject I have been doing uh, research on for the better part of two decades, and I've not only published uh, books and academic article articles on it, I even wrote a, uh, an article in 2013 for a little newspaper called the New York Times that was uh, about Lincoln's colonization work. So she cites this, she tweets it out and says that this vindicates her, and uh, within a few days of her posting this, someone points out that the author is Phil Magnus, who had been a critic of other parts of the 1619 Project. So uh, within a matter of weeks, Nicole Hannah-Jones turns around and not only stops citing my work in support of her claims, she starts attacking me personally. She starts trashing my credentials, points out that I have a, a, a degree from a public policy school in economic history rather than a traditional history department, uh, starts accusing me of, uh, of not being sufficiently uh, well published on slavery to weigh in on the 1619 Project. Mind you, I've written over two dozen scholarly works on this and she has zero. Uh, so just like that, because she found out I was a critic of the 1619 Project, she dropped me. And then the icing on the cake is when the new book edition of the 1619 Project comes out, she heavily revises that exact passage, uh, doesn't cite it to me. Now she has a new revised account of Lincoln and colonization that's cited to Ibram X. Kendi, the critical race theory scholar. And, and, and let's point out that Nicole Hannah-Jones herself, far from being a published academic with a body of scholarly work, is basically a journalist who has been, and, and a lot of her defenders too, she, I mean, she's been criticized by some of the leading scholars of the American founding. I, I would say that her, you know, the central, the theory that the American founding was somehow mobilized to defend slavery, that has been pretty widely debunked. But what you have taken into your sites, which I think is really important, is a second theme that has gotten a little bit less attention. Uh, and this is a theme that Nicole Hannah-Jones is currently teaching a so-called master class on. And it's the idea that the slave system was a sort of quintessence of capitalism. The slave system was the capitalist system par excellence and to some degree led to the establishment of global capitalism. So. Start by talking, am I correctly describing what the 1619 Project contends? Let's start with that, and then I'm going to ask you why that thesis is flat out wrong. I think this is absolutely a perfect summary of what's going on here. So there was a second essay in the 1619 Project, and it was written by a sociologist at Princeton by the name of Matthew Desmond. Uh, Desmond had never worked on slavery before. His academic work was on 20th century race relations. But for some reason, she tapped him to write this essay. And the gist of the essay is that American capitalism is infused with the brutality of the plantation slave system. They're basically wedded at the hip. And he jumps from this to a modern day 
21st century political argument that basically claims that American capitalism is forever tainted by slavery. And the obvious implication is it needs to be overthrown. We need income redistribution. We need to reformulate uh, how we look at the economy. We need to pass things like the Green New Deal and socialized health care. So it's, it's very much a political agenda packaged into trying to tie slavery and capitalism together. Now, the one problem, of the, yeah. so I'm sorry, well, I was going to say one sure, of the sure, kind of, one of the smoking gun pieces of evidence that is uh, produced to make this point is plantation records, right? In other words, you have, um, you have Desmond and you have Hannah Jones both saying, listen, these plantation owners kept, I, I think one guy even calls them Microsoft Excel spreadsheets exactly. about the plantation. So many slaves, supplies, this is the clothing allocation, this is the amount of cotton, they, and, they're, and they're using the existence of accounting to, uh, to say, well, listen, that's capitalism right there. Who else does accounting except capitalists? And you point out that everybody does accounting. Capitalists do it, but of course, non-capitalist societies also do accounting. Say a word about that. Absolutely. So, yeah, this is the big claim. And Matthew Desmond states it in his essay. He says that Microsoft Excel traces all the way back to the plantation accounting books. Um, I even found his citation on that was to another book. He mistranscribed where the author of the other book said, I'm not claiming Microsoft Excel comes from the plantation accounting books. And yet that was the claim of the 1619 project. But, uh, but here's the interesting thing. Every society that deals with allocation needs to engage in accounting of some form. And one of the arguments that these historians, uh, the new historians of capitalism that Desmond and Nicole Hannah Jones rely upon make is that the very existence of accounting books on the plantation proves that they're capitalistic. Well, I'm sitting here saying, wait a second, we can go to the Soviet Union's gulags and find accounting books where the labor records are entered in. Uh, we can find the most horrendously central planned societies in history use some of the most complex forms of accounting known to man uh, for the very reason that they've obviated the price mechanism. If you take economic exchange out of a market, you actually need more accounting than you do for like a self-regulating mechanism of the market. So uh, it's a complete non sequitur that they're basing this claim on that capitalism is somehow demonstrated to be involved in slavery because of accounting. No, it's quite the opposite. Accounting on the plantations actually illustrates that these plantations are microcosms of a centrally planned economy. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I want to explore how in the broadest sense, uh, slave plantations, far from being an expression of capitalism, were the were the antithesis of capitalism. We'll be right back. 